Wasting no time following last week's launch, SpaceX is back in full send mode and working around the clock. With the new crane arriving and the pile cap getting placed for the next launch tower, crews are pushing forward with construction of the next launch complex. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week, first thing on Friday morning, several Movac vacuum trucks arrived at the launch site to empty out the detention pond following the launch the day before. Additional steel forms for the base of the next tower continue to arrive at the launch site. Around lunchtime, the orbital launch mount work platform was rolled out of storage and headed back down Highway 4 to the launch site. Once there, it was delivered to the launch mount area. A little while later, Vacuum Raptor 390 was once again brought out of the Raptor's nest behind Mega Bay 1 and staged in front of High Bay. Less than a half an hour later, the engine was lifted into the building for installation on Ship 30. Later that afternoon, the ship lifting squid was loaded onto a trailer and driven past rover camera on its way to the Massey outpost. That evening, SpaceX's LR-11000 crane raised its boom as it prepared to get back to work following the fourth integrated flight test. In the early hours of Saturday morning, the white stand that had been used for the engine swap on Ship 30 was lifted out of High Bay. In short order, the stand was taken away between High Bay and Mega Bay 1. Just about a half hour later, a new horizontal cryogenic storage tank arrived at the Sanchez site. Presumably, it will end up at the launch site where the new foundations are being prepared. A few hours later, a pair of SPMTs made their way into High Bay in preparation for some vehicle repositioning in the near future. Later that morning, several truckloads of additional parts for the new launch tower base were spotted headed down Highway 4 to the launch site, where they were staged to await installation. Late that night, the third section of Booster 15's liquid oxygen tank was moved out of the staging area and taken into Mega Bay 1 for stacking. On Sunday evening, two concrete pump trucks arrived at Starbase and headed straight for the site of the next launch tower. In relatively short order, the trucks were moved into position and began placing concrete for the massive pile cap that will support the second Starbase launch integration tower. A few hours later, a third pump truck arrived and also set to work. Then for the rest of the night and on through most of Monday morning, the trucks continued their work on the thick foundation. Eventually, one by one, the trucks began packing up and leaving, with the final pump truck wrapping up roughly 17 hours after the pour began. While the foundation pour was happening, the four steel feet that are the interface between the tower base and the first of the prefabricated tower sections were loaded onto a trailer and moved from Sanchez to the launch site. Also that afternoon, Ship 30 was repositioned inside of High Bay. The Flight 5 Starship was moved into the front right corner of the building where crews will undertake the massive job of replacing its entire heat shield. Over at the Massey Outpost, Ship 26 was rolled away from the flame trench and over to the LR-1600 crane. The crane already had the ship lifting squid ready in anticipation of removing the Starship from the static fire stand. Around that same time, Rover 2 caught a crane lifting a valve out of the liquid oxygen side of the orbital tank farm. A short time later, Nurtle Camp caught the delivery of a new black mystery item to the launch site. Once there, the item headed towards the tower area before disappearing behind the new restroom building. You know we want to know what you think, so knock yourself out in the comments and let us know what you think it's for. Late that afternoon, trucks began delivering counterweights and crane mats for a Saren CC8800 crane. This big crawler crane will have a boom booster configuration and a greater lifting capacity than the LR11350 cranes that were used to build the first two Starship towers. Early that evening, two SPMTs were once again spotted moving from their parking spot just inside the ring yard gate and heading into High Bay. That evening and on into the night, workers were seen removing 10 of the hold down clamps from the orbital launch mount. It's not immediately clear yet if there was an issue or why only half of the clamps were removed. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, the continuous flight auger piling rig was spotted getting back to work at the new launch pad. With the initial piles for the tower now finished, crews can work on preparing for the rest of the infrastructure in the area. 
Later that morning, additional parts for the new CC8800 crane arrived, including several shipping containers loaded with some of the parts of the boom booster. Having this higher capacity crane should allow SpaceX to stack the tower with all the mechanicals and interior staircases that we've seen installed without running into the capacity issues that were seen in Florida. Up the road at the Star Factory building, workers were seen putting straps across the last opening in the side of the building. These straps will be used to support a plastic sheet that will be placed across the opening to temporarily close it off. Eventually, the office building is expected to be connected to the factory here. Around noon, a truckload of booster chine parts pulled into the ring yard gate. After a brief stay, the truck pulled back out onto the highway and took the parts to the Sanchez site for offloading. A few hours later, the LR11000 began placing the newly delivered crane mats in preparation for assembly of the CC8800. Meanwhile, a truck carrying additional steel for the construction of the base of the new launch tower rolled down Highway 4 to the launch site. Throughout the afternoon, the launch site LR11000 continued to work placing the crane mats for the new crane. Later, an SPMT loaded with a couple of large stacks of cribbing rolled down Highway 4 and turned into the D1 gate to the tower building area. That evening, a few more pieces of steel-clad formwork for the new tower also arrived at the launch complex. Nightfall didn't bring the work to an end for the day as a crane was observed offloading pieces of the CC-8800's boom booster from the shipping containers that had arrived earlier. Overnight, SpaceX used a rolling transport closure to move Ship 26 out of the Massey outpost and down Highway 4 back to the build site. Once there, the recently static-fired Starship was parked at the Rocket Garden. A few hours later, the next four-ring section of Booster 15's liquid oxygen tank was moved over to the staging area outside of Mega Bay 1 as SpaceX continues to push forward with construction of the latest Super Heavy. As the Wednesday sun dawned on Starbase, the piling rig could once again be seen working in the area around Orbital Launch Pad Complex B. Around that same time, Sentinel camera caught both halves of one of the crawler tracks for the CC-8800 moving down Highway 4 to the launch site. The tracks for this crane are, are so large that they are split into two pieces for shipping. About a half hour later, a crane was spotted removing the formwork from around the freshly poured pile cap for the new launch integration tower. As the morning continued on, new parts for the CC-8800 as well as additional pieces of steel formwork for the base of the launch tower continued to arrive and line up outside of the launch site gate to await their turn to be offloaded. Back up the road at the build site, a bridge crane girder was spotted arriving on a flatbed and being taken over to the Star Factory building. It was then followed by a second truck with what appeared to be other bridge crane hardware on it. Around lunchtime, the LR11000 continued to offload and move pieces of the new launch tower construction crane, even as additional pieces of the massive machine continued to arrive. Later that afternoon, the catch rail on one of the chopsticks was raised and lowered as teams worked to ensure the hardware is ready to go for a possible booster catch attempt on Flight 5. Late that night, a concrete pump truck unfolded and began working on the connector area that will join the new office building with the corner of the Star Factory. In the early hours of Thursday morning, the cranes at the construction site for the new tower began shuffling around the steel for the structure's base. Once the pile cap has cured sufficiently, crews will be looking to move quickly on the tower's construction. Meanwhile, over at the existing orbital launch pad, a crane was spotted lifting hold-down clamps for installation on the launch mount. It's not clear if these are replacements for the ones that were removed two days before, or if they're the same ones being reinstalled following inspections and other refurbishment. As the new day dawned, several more deliveries for the new CC-8800 crane arrived at the launch complex for offload. These deliveries included another Saren shipping container, some counterweights, and lattice sections, likely of the crane's derrick. Meanwhile, another day at Starbase means another day of work for the continuous flight augering pile crew at the new orbital launch pad. Late that morning, over at the existing launch pad, the first of the booster alignment pins were lifted and reinstalled on the top deck of the mount. Around that same time, one of the chopstick landing rails was spotted being raised and lowered again for testing. 
These rails are expected to be raised prior to catching and act as a shock absorber as the booster touches down on the arms. Back up Highway 4 at the build site, yet another bridge crane girder was moved across the ring yard and into the Star Factory as SpaceX continues to outfit their machine that builds the machines. Chopstick testing was underway at the launch site early that afternoon and the alignment sled of one of the Mechazilla arms was extended. About an hour later, with crews continuing to prepare Stage 0 for a return to booster testing, the second booster alignment pin was lifted and reinstalled on the top of the launch mount. Out at the cryogenic offload area, a white cloud was spotted coming off the top of one of the perlite vacuum trucks. It seems likely that the truck vacuum continued running after the truck was full, leaving the removed perlite with nowhere else to go. Over at the new tower construction site, it appeared that the pile cap was sufficiently cured and crews were ready to move forward with construction. As the afternoon turned into evening, the steel forms for the first two corners of the tower base were lifted and installed onto the fresh concrete. That night, with crews making quick work of the next Super Heavy's lower half, another section of Booster 15's liquid oxygen tank was moved into the ring yard and staged outside of Mega Bay 1. Later, some of the steel-clad wall sections of the new tower's base were shoveled around at the launch site as workers looked to move quickly on the structure. Switching over to Florida, first thing Friday morning, just read the instructions, was towed back into Port Canaveral with Falcon 9 Booster 1067 following the Starlink Group 8-5 mission. Just three hours later, the 20-flight veteran rocket was lifted off of the drone ship and placed onto the dockside stand. That night, Falcon 9 Booster 1067 launched its 16th mission as it took off from Space Launch Complex 40 with another batch of Starlink satellites. The next morning, Booster 1067's legs had been stowed and it was lifted off the stand and transferred to an awaiting SPMT for its return to the famous Roberts Road. Just a few hours later, tugboat Break of Dawn towed the recently loaded barge of tower hardware out of Port Canaveral to begin its journey to Brownsville. On Sunday afternoon, Bob returned to port with all four of the fairing halves from the Starlink Group 8-5 and 10-1 launches. The next day, SpaceX's other fairing recovery vessel, Doug, headed out to sea to support the next Starlink launch. And just a few hours later, just read the instructions also departed from Port Canaveral in support of that same mission. And less than two hours after that, the other East Coast drone ship, a short follow Gravitas, was towed to the Port Canaveral dock with Booster 1069. First thing the next morning, the rocket was lifted off the deck of the drone ship and transferred to the dockside stand for leg stowage and processing before its return to the SpaceX refurbishment facilities. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, guys, if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.